forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to my channel. In this video, we will share with you the following topics. 1. Things to know before you go to Hong Kong. 2. Hong Kong has both an ultra-rich upper class and the dirt poor masses. 3. The dream and reality of living in a crowed place. 4. Does the US recognize Hong Kong? 5. The top 10 foods you have to eat in Hong Kong. 6. 10 things every visitor must experience in Hong Kong. 7. How 156 years of British rule shaped Hong Kong. 8. How many billionaires are in Hong Kong? 9. What is the issue between China and Hong Kong? 10. Can Hong Kong residents move to UK? 10 things every visitor must experience in Hong Kong. 1. Devouring dim sum your way, any time of day. The act of eating dim sum is called a yum si che, which translates to drink tea, you'll find locals doing plenty of that throughout their meal, a to aid digestion. Dim sum is a large range of small dishes, that Cantonese people traditionally enjoy in restaurants for breakfast and lunch. Dim sum is a huge part of Hong Kong's unique heritage and cultural identity. Why dim sum is popular? It's a chance for friends and family to catch up and enjoy a delicious meal together. It's the act of sharing dishes of favorite items like dumplings, rice, noodles and many more dishes that were meant for sharing, while you talk about what's new in life and in the news. 2. Haggling at the city street markets. As well as being a food paradise and home to many amazing restaurants, Hong Kong is also well known for the city street market culture. For a geographically tiny city, Hong Kong has an incredible range of street markets that specialize in everything from cheap electronics to authentic Chinese dried seafood. Unlike Bangkok or Taiwan, it's rare to find a night market in Hong Kong, a situation that gives instant fame to Temple Street. After the sun goes down, the stalls pop up. Hong Kong markets are an absolute must on any visit to the city. They remain an everyday part of life in Hong Kong, and locals still use them to buy everything from cooking oil, and onions to a new shirt, or computer. This is life in Hong Kong at its loudest, liveliest and most entertaining as shoppers try, and bargain over the prices and stallholders try, and reel them in. 3. Climbing the steps up to the base of Big Buddha. Watching over Hong Kong like a god incarnate, the Tian Tan Buddha is a stunning statue that stands 34 meters high. Ride the cable car to reach it, and stop for lunch at nearby Po Lin Monastery. Tian Tan Buddha is a large bronze statue of Buddha Shakyamuni, completed in 1993, and located at Ngongping, Lantau Island, in Hong Kong. The statue is sited near Po Lin Monastery, and symbolizes the harmonious relationship between man and nature, people and faith. 4. Museums Sim Sha Zui. The Hong Kong Museum of Art was established in 1962 as part of City Hall, and now is home to over 16,000 works in its pink-tiled, multipurpose space. It not only boasts one of the largest local art collections in the city, but is also packed with paintings, calligraphic works, and antiques from the Chinese mainland. The museum also regularly hosts and presents themed shows that attract reputable names from overseas, whilst also promoting local artists. 5. Macau is special administration region. Just over 60 kilometers west of Hong Kong, Macau is more than worth a day trip away. Filled with everything from UNESCO heritage sites to luxe casinos, Macau is a haven for both tourists Hong Kongers who want a convenient holiday. Aside from historic monuments and five-star hotels, Macau is home to many mega clubs like Pasha and Cubic, as well as excellent coffee shops scattered through the cobbled streets. 6. Hong Kong Island Bus Tours 
bus tours, they're a great way to absorb a city's assorted sights, but without too much hassle. You don't need to pace around on foot, or haggle with a taxi driver, and there's actually plenty of bus tours to choose from in Hong Kong. Some last five hours, some last half a day, some include visits to Lantau Island, and Tai O, some are completely private, and personalizable. If you're pushed for time, and want to do things to your particular beat, we suggest the Big Bus Hong Kong Hop on Hop Off Tour. 7. Hong Kong Food Tour Not for nothing is Hong Kong widely known as Asia's food paradise. It's home to many fantastic Cantonese restaurants, as well as cousins from across the globe. And if you fancy getting stuck in, join a food walking tour. If you fancy a jaunt through central Sheng Wan, a four-hour food tour will give you the opportunity to tuck into famous local dishes including wontons, roast meat, and egg tarts at assorted spots in these neighborhoods. Another food tour to try out is the small group island food tour, and join fellow foodies as you make stops at five famous eateries chowing down dim sum, and local milk tea. Informative? And delicious. 8. Victoria Harbour Cruise Tour An evening cruise around Hong Kong's world-famous harbour, is a chance to really appreciate its iconic skyline. As night falls, and the city's lights twinkle on, a magical atmosphere unfolds. There's plenty of different cruises to choose from, a straightforward harbour cruise, a dinner cruise, a sunset cruise with dinner options at the Jumbo Floating Restaurant, Victoria Peak, and Lei Yue Mun Seafood Village, a cruise to catch the Symphony of Lights, an afternoon sightseeing tour with dinner cruise, as well as a New Year's Eve fireworks dinner cruise. 9. Hong Kong Shore Excursion Change it up from a bus tour, and explore Hong Kong Island by ferry, and sampan. The Hong Kong Star Ferry has been in operation more than a century, and is still the fastest, and cheapest way to travel between Tsin Sha Sui, and Hong Kong Island. Not to mention, brilliant views of the iconic skyline. Join Hong Kong Shore Excursion for a unique full-day city sightseeing tour, and explore town on a mix of ferry, sampan, and tram with stops in Aberdeen Fishing Village, Stanley, and Mong Kok Ladies Market. 10. Star Ferry a less than 5 minute journey from shore to shore, the Star Ferry is the swiftest, and cheapest way to travel between Tsim Sha Sui, and Central Wan Chai. Despite its short length, the journey still feels leisurely, helped in no small part by the cooling breeze. And you also get some truly spectacular views of Hong Kong's skyline. Essentially front row seats to Victoria Harbour. Cameras of the ready people. City vistas don't get much better than this. Is Hong Kong a part of China? The whole territory was transferred to China in 1997. As a special administrative region, Hong Kong maintains separate governing and economic systems from that of mainland China under the principle of a one country, two systems. What is the issue between China and Hong Kong? The cultural and economic differences are widely considered as a primary cause of the conflict between Hong Kong and mainland China. The differences between Hong Kong people and mainlanders, such as language, as well as the significant growth in number of mainland visitors, have caused tension. What is the reason for Hong Kong protest? The founding cause of the 2019 and 2020 Hong Kong protests was the proposed legislation of the 2019 Hong Kong Extradition Bill. However, other causes have been pointed out, such as demands for democratic reform, the Causeway Bay books disappearances, or the fear of losing a high degree of autonomy, in general. What is Hong Kong's new law? China has passed a wide-ranging new security law for Hong Kong, which makes it easier to punish protesters, and reduces the city's autonomy. Critics have called it the end of Hong Kong. So what do we know, and what do people fear the most? What are the five demands Hong Kong? As the protests progressed, citizens laid out five key demands, 
namely the withdrawal of the bill, an investigation into alleged police brutality, and misconduct, the release of all the arrested, a retraction of the official characterization of the protests as a riots, and the resignation of Carrie Lam as chief. Is Hong Kong safe right now? Unless you're planning to join the protests, Hong Kong should still be safe for visitors. A level 2 warning from the United States State Department means, they equivocate all the action in Hong Kong to be of, a similar level of caution as daily life in London, or Rome. Why is Hong Kong important to China? Hong Kong's importance to the Chinese economy is disproportionate to its size. Since Hong Kong's handover in 1997, China has developed massive economic and business interests in the territory. It entails a strong and unwavering commitment to its rule of law, the key to Hong Kong's economic success. Why did UK give back Hong Kong? Opium Wars The first opium war lasted from 1839 to 1842. Britain invaded the Chinese mainland and occupied the island of Hong Kong. China lost the war and had to cede Hong Kong to Britain in the Treaty of Nanjing. As a result, Hong Kong became a crown colony of the British Empire. At midnight on July 1, 1997, Hong Kong reverts back to Chinese rule in a ceremony attended by British Prime Minister Tony Blair, Prince Charles of Wales, Chinese President Jiang Zemin, and US Secretary of State Madeleine Albright. A few thousand Hong Kongers protested the turnover, which was otherwise celebratory and peaceful. What is Hong Kong new security law? China has imposed a national security law on Hong Kong, which changes many things for citizens in the territory. It introduces new penalties, up to life in prison, for offences including advocating for Hong Kong's independence. The legislation gives Beijing extensive powers, it has never had before to shape life in the territory far beyond the legal system. Who rules Hong Kong? Hong Kong exists as a special administrative region controlled by the People's Republic of China, and enjoys its own limited autonomy as defined by the basic law. The principle of a one country, two systems allows for the coexistence of socialism and capitalism under one country, which is mainland China. What is your nationality if you were born in Hong Kong? Nationality status under the nationality law of the People's Republic of China, you are a Chinese citizen, if you are a Hong Kong resident, or former resident who is of Chinese descent, and were born in mainland China, or Hong Kong. Are you a British citizen, if you were born in Hong Kong? By this definition, anyone born in Hong Kong after it became a British colony in 1842 was a British subject. The Naturalization of Aliens Act 1847 expanded what had been covered in the Naturalization Act 1844, which applied only to people within the United Kingdom, to all its dominions and colonies. Is Hong Kong safe for female travelers? Hong Kong is regarded as one of the safest cities in the world. With low crime rates, well-maintained infrastructure and roadways, and well-trained police, and medical services, you shouldn't have much to worry about. Does China get money from Hong Kong? What is at stake? China uses Hong Kong's currency, equity, and debt markets to attract foreign funds. While international companies use Hong Kong as a launchpad to expand into mainland China. The bulk of foreign direct investment, FDI, in China, continues to be channeled through the city. Does Hong Kong pay taxes to China? In addition, under Article 106 of the Hong Kong Basic Law, Hong Kong enjoys independent public finance, and no tax revenue is handed over to the central government in China, taxes are collected through the Inland Revenue Department, IRD. Did the British ever rule China? In 1839, in the First Opium War, Britain invaded China to crush opposition to its interference in the country's economic, social, and political affairs. On July 1, 1898, Britain was granted an additional 99 years of rule over the Hong Kong colony, under the Second Convention of Peking. Does the US recognize Hong Kong? 
It was signed into law by President Trump on 14 July 2020, following the enactment of the Hong Kong National Security Law in June 2020, this act also suspends parts of the United States and Hong Kong Policy Act of 1992, and effectively states that Hong Kong is no longer treated separate from China. And British citizens live in Hong Kong. There have been noticeably fewer native Britons emigrating to Hong Kong since the handover. During British Hong Kong era, Britons wishing to live and work in Hong Kong were not subject to the immigration and visa restrictions that would apply today. Can Hong Kong residents move to UK? From 31 January 2021, a new visa will be available to Hong Kong British national or overseas citizens of BNOs and their close family members. Under the new route, the UK government estimates that 5.4 million Hong Kong residents will be eligible to move to the UK and eventually become British citizens. What rights do British overseas citizens have? Rights as a British overseas citizen. You can hold a British passport, get consular assistance and protection from UK diplomatic posts. Is it safe to travel to China? Generally speaking, China is a safe country to travel around, and most people you meet are friendly, honest, and trustworthy. However, China is far from immune to crime, the weather can affect travel plans, there are some health risks that may be new to you, and accidents do happen. Is visa needed for Hong Kong? US citizens visiting Hong Kong for not more than 3 months and 90 days, are not required to obtain visas. Those wishing to stay in Hong Kong more than three months must obtain visas from a Chinese embassy or consulate. Visitors are not permitted to study or work whether paid or not. Why is Hong Kong's economy so good? Hong Kong's economic strengths include a sound banking system, virtually no public debt, a strong legal system, ample foreign exchange reserves at around US $408 billion as of mid-2017, rigorous anti-corruption measures, and close ties with mainland China. Is Hong Kong a rich country? Hong Kong is not a fully independent nation, but rather a special administrative region of China. But it has its own powerful economy with a GDP of $414.3 billion, and a GNI per capita of $58,420 per person. In addition to being one of the wealthiest countries in the world, Hong Kong is also one of the healthiest. Why are taxes so low in Hong Kong? Companies and workers in Hong Kong enjoy some of the lowest taxes in the world. This is partly because the government has huge fiscal reserves, equivalent to more than 12 months of expenditure. The interest received on these reserves is a crucial source of revenue and helps keep the tax burden light. Who elects Hong Kong Chief Executive? The chosen chief executive must be appointed by the Central People's Government before taking office. According to Article 46 the term of office of the chief executive is five years, with a maximum of two consecutive terms. What is Hong Kong's main industry? financial services, trading and logistics, tourism, and producer, and professional services are the four key industries in the Hong Kong economy. They have been the driving force of Hong Kong's economic growth, providing impetus to growth of other sectors, and creating employment. How many billionaires are in Hong Kong? 96 billionaires. Hong Kong ranks seventh on the list, with a total of 96 billionaires with a combined wealth of $280 billion. A large share of the world's billionaire population lives in Eastern Asia, several cities like Hong Kong, and Beijing made the list. 10 things to know before your travel to Hong Kong. 1. Relatively expensive, and smaller hotel rooms. Hong Kong is known for its sky-high property price. Due to its limited land, their property prices are one of the highest in the world. A typical one-night stay in a four-star hotel is around 200 US dollars. Hence, if you are planning to travel to Hong Kong, be prepared of paying a few hundred dollars for one-night stay in a standard room hotel. 
2. Check in your luggage outside the airport. You can check in your luggage one full day, before the flight outside the airport. They call this in-town check-ins. This means if your flight is tomorrow, you can go to Hong Kong or Kowloon MPR station to check in you heavy luggage first. No more dragging of your bulky luggage with you all the way to the airport. 3. The all-in-one octopus card. This is a prepaid card. You can buy the card at the Hong Kong Airport MPR station, right after you arrive. You will pay 150 Hong Kong dollars for an octopus card with 100 Hong Kong dollars value in it, 50 Hong Kong dollars being the card deposit. Once you use up the value, you can refill it at any MPR station in Hong Kong. You can use it for purchase of almost anything. But what makes the card so good, is that you do not need to carry any coins with you, a big inconvenience for many tourists. You can use it at public transport, train, bus and tram, supermarkets, parking shop, welcome and etc. Fast food, McDonald's, KFC and etc. HK Fast Food, Café de Coral, Maxims, Fairwood and etc. Bakery shops. Vending machines. 4. Sharing seats in CH and Teng eating places. Sharing seats in Hong Kong is normal. You and your two friends a total three persons sit down in a four-seater table in cafe. If you are in some other countries, you can decide to put your stuffs on that extra seat but not in Hong Kong. As you already know, Hong Kong has a the highest property price in the world. In other words, every square foot of space is expensive, and if not utilized fully, it is money lost. So for that extra seat beside you in the cafe, you have to leave it empty, and share it with a stranger who needs a seat. And you don't have a choice. The cafe owner, or the waiter will ask you to give up that seat. A&E not only that. If you have three persons sit in the cafe, you have to purchase at least three items, one item for each person, of at least certain amount of dollars, or you have to pay just for sitting there. If you really want to have some privacy, and not sharing seats with others, then you have to eat at higher-end restaurants, where the opportunity costs is already factored into the food price. 5. Hong Kong is highly connected to many nearby cities, and islands. In Hong Kong, you can take a train into mainland China to Shenzhen, or take a ferry to Macau, or Zhuhai. You can also take a ferry to the little islands around Hong Kong. What does this mean? When you plan for your tour around Hong Kong, you don't have to stay at only one place. You can add these nearby places as part of your itinerary. 6. No goods and service tax, and no sales tax. Ever wonder why the Hong Kong Tourism Board promotes Hong Kong as a shopping heaven? Just like Singapore, they have huge shopping districts, with lots of international brands, lots of choices for shopaholics. But this is something that makes it more enticing than Singapore, Hong Kong does not have any goods and service tax EGST, or value added tax a VAT, or whatever sales tax you call it. Singapore has a GST of 7%. Europe has VAT of around 20%. Other countries have similar form of sales tax. 7. A great place for hiking. Hong Kong is popularly known as a place to eat, and shop, and eat, and shop. But little did people know it is a great place to hike. If you're a nature lover, and want to burn some calories because of the food you have tasted while touring Hong Kong, do consider to climb some mountains. The weather here is cool, and windy. 8. A really fast-paced city. People in Hong Kong tend to move fast. They eat fast, they walk fast, their cafes serve fast, and clear tables fast. Everything is fast. Even when you are walking at your fastest speed, you may still feel you are walking slower than the aunties here. When you are walking along the streets, or crossing the traffic light junction, people may accidentally bump into you. But don't get offended, it's the way of life here. 9. Hong Kongers speak Cantonese, English, and Mandarin, in this order. 
Cantonese is the main language in Hong Kong. If you can't speak Cantonese, it's okay. People can converse with you in English too. Most Hong Kongers can speak English fluently. So if you can't speak Cantonese, don't worry, you can still survive in Hong Kong. Do Hong Kongers speak Mandarin? Yes they do, just not as fluent as the mainland Chinese people. 10. Hong Kong is a food heaven. Lots and lots of food to try. Hong Kong offers some of the best food. It brings together cuisines from all over the world. Many other authentic dishes include Chiao Chao cuisine, Hyun cuisine, Sichuan cuisine, Beijing dishes, Shanghai dishes, as well as vegetarian cuisine. Many people think Hong Kong is a food paradise, with eateries from different countries. Which means you can taste food from different places in a small area. Your trip to Hong Kong is not complete, without sampling countless delicious food here, from street food to Michelin-starred restaurants. Hong Kong's gap between the rich and the poor had been widened since COVID-19. Income inequality was rising sharply. Hong Kong may be the world's most unequal place to live. There are approximately about 210,000 Hong Kong residents who live in one of the city's thousands of illegally subdivided apartments. Some are so small they are called cages and coffins. It is a relatively spacious 100 square feet to sleep, cook, and live. So many people are priced out of the housing market that it is unusual to meet a young adult who does not still live with parents or family members. Wages haven't risen as quickly as the cost of living, particularly at the low end. Living in a small and cramped apartment recounts from dream to reality. The frustration is sometimes unbearable. There almost always is something smashes to the floor, someone is shouting, and a door slams. Heavy footsteps come bounding down the stairwell and pound past your door. That's where and when the dream started to unravel into a reality. The ongoing 2019-20 Hong Kong protests, also known as Anti-Extradition Law Amendment Bill Movement, were triggered by the introduction of the Fugitive Offenders Amendment Bill, by the Hong Kong government. On the 6th of September, the biggest protests in the course of the 2019-20 Hong Kong protests since 1 July occurred in the city. The fresh protests were in a large part due to the day having been the scheduled election day for the Legislative Council. On 31 July, the Hong Kong government had the elections postponed by a year, citing the COVID-19 pandemic, a justification that was widely doubted. The unauthorized protests resulted in nearly 300 arrests, one of them on suspected violation of the national security law, and brought the total number of arrests during the entire protests since June 2019 to above 10,000. Police in Hong Kong have fired pepper spray balls at crowds, protesting against a government decision to delay legislative elections in the territory. Hong Kong, a former British colony, was handed back to China in 1997 under an agreement meant to guarantee a high degree of autonomy for 50 years. How the dream of Hong Kong democracy was dimmed. In May 2019, Hong Kong lawmakers scuffled over a bill that would allow extraditions to mainland China, where courts are controlled by the ruling Communist Party. That was followed by huge street protests, with organizers estimating that one million people marched on June 9, 2019, in a city of about 7.5 million. In late June 2020, the mainland government imposed an ominously vague, and far-reaching national security bill on Hong Kong, that targeted dissent, and protest. Calls for Hong Kong to be independent were made illegal, and sabotaging transportation infrastructure, which became increasingly common during the protests, was designated as terrorism. A national security office was set up, and China's state security apparatus, which had previously worked covertly in Hong Kong, was allowed to operate in public. Beijing officials went even further, granting the Hong Kong government broad powers to remove lawmakers from office, who do not show clear loyalty to China. Within minutes, Hong Kong officials removed the four lawmakers, 
prompting the other 15 members of the pro-democracy bloc to resign in protest. Their departures will leave the political opposition, without a voice in the Hong Kong legislature, which had stood as a symbol of the one country, two systems, framework, intended to keep Hong Kong semi-autonomous until 2047. What is the difference between Hong Kong and China? Perhaps the most significant difference between mainland China and Hong Kong is that the mainland is communist and controlled by a single party while Hong Kong has a limited democracy. The chief executive is accountable to the central people's government. What is the new Hong Kong law? In the name of national security, the law gives the Chinese central and Hong Kong government's new expansive powers to oversee and manage schools, social organizations, media, and the internet in Hong Kong. Many worry that measures similar to those in mainland China will be rolled out to control foreign journalists. Authorities denied permission for a protest march, citing security concerns, and an anti-coronavirus ban on more than four people gathering in public. A trio of young Hong Kong opposition activists have been sentenced, after pleading guilty to organizing a demonstration last year, as part of a larger protest against Hong Kong's receding autonomy. The three Joshua Wong, Agnes Chow and Ivan Lam have been held without bail, since pleading guilty in late November for organizing and participating in the protest last year that surrounded police headquarters. Wong, Chow and Lam, all in their 20s, are also founding members of the now disbanded Dima Sisto opposition political party. Where does Hong Kong go from here? China had transformed Hong Kong into a typical mainland city, almost overnight. Hong Kongers now live under a pall of fear. They are scrubbing their social media accounts of old posts, critical of the Chinese government or supportive of the protest movement. Shops have scraped pro-democracy posters and stickers off their facades. Books by local democracy activist Joshua Wong have been removed from the shelves at public libraries. Some people have deleted the Chinese messaging and all-purpose app WeChat from their phones. Many have switched to apps like Signal and Telegram, considered to have more secure encryption.
Chinese foods you have to eat in Hong Kong, Singapore, and other Chinatowns. 1. Dim Sum One of the best reasons you should travel to Hong Kong is to eat dim sum. Not only is dim sum one of the most famous foods to eat in Hong Kong, but eating dim sum is one of the most fun and delicious food experiences you can have. 2. Roast Goose Few foods in the world can compare to the excitement that you will have from the anticipation of eating Hong Kong roasted goose. Marinated in a blend of secret spices, of which some recipes include over 20 different spices and aromatics, then roasted using charcoal until golden crispy perfection, roast goose is a must-eat in Hong Kong. When you take a bite, literally the skin juices in your mouth, while being incredibly crispy at the same time, and the meat is lusciously succulent. 3. Roast Pork Roast pork, usually the belly of the pig, is roasted until utterly crispy on the outside skin, yet creamy, and soft from the high quantity of fat on the underside. The result is simply one of the most superb bites of anything you could possibly eat. 4. Roast Chicken The Cantonese-style roast chicken can be so crispy and so oily that it actually tastes like it's deep-fried chicken rather than roasted. The skin is crispy and slightly chewy, while the chicken meat remains moist and juicy. Sometimes you dip roast chicken into fragrant salt for extra delicious flavoring. 5. Char Siu Char Siu, which can also be referred to as a Cantonese style of barbecue pork, is one of the standard meats at any Hong Kong roast meat shop. The pork is marinated in a mixture of soy sauce, hoisin sauce, honey or sugar for sweetness, and a seasoning blend that includes five spices. 6. Soy Sauce Braised Pigeon At many of the roast meat shops in Hong Kong, they often also have a few pigeons on display and waiting for you to order them. Roast pigeon is fantastic, it's even more flavorful and richer than duck. Some pieces of pigeon that you eat will have an almost livery texture and taste and it's absolutely fantastic. 7. Brisket curry slash brisket noodles. Beef brisket can be served with a variety of different noodles, in soup, or with a plate of dry noodles. There's also Hong Kong brisket curry, where the brisket is shredded into flavorful curry and often paired with nuggets of tendon. Whatever your choice, when you travel to Hong Kong, brisket is a must eat. 8. Clay Pot Rice. Rice is cooked within a clay pot and can be combined with a number of extra ingredients, like chicken, pork, Chinese sausage, or mushrooms. One of the best reasons clay pot rice is so good is because of the sauce that you splash all over it before you eat it, and also because of the fragrant crunchy rice crust that you get on the edges of the clay pot. 9. Pork Chop on Rice or Noodles Another classic Hong Kong street food is a pork chop seasoned lightly, possibly brushed in cornstarch and served with either rice or instant noodles. Although it may just seem like a simple pork chop, the saltiness and ratio of meat to fat, plus being fried in lots of oil, makes it somehow so incredibly delicious. 10. Fish Ball Noodles Fish balls are something popular to eat throughout Asia, perhaps it's the lightness and texture of the fish balls, or the fact that they are often considered a relatively healthy food to eat, that makes them so attractive. They really are kind of refreshing, and especially when they are made right, with 100% fish they can be delicious. 11. Wonton Noodles A handful of freshly made thin egg noodles, paired with dumplings usually filled with mostly shrimp, but sometimes including a bit of minced pork, all submerged in a hot, lightly seasoned salty broth, and finally sprinkled with some chopped green onions completes a bowl of wonton noodles. 12. Instant noodles. Instant noodles happen to be one of the most popular Hong Kong street foods, and though they are pretty MSG heavy, it's hard to beat the nostalgia of a hot bowl of instant noodles with an egg or two dropped in. 13. Curry fried rice. Made in an extremely hot wok, while keeping the flame at a precise heat, egg, ham, and some bits of seafood are fried with rice and curry flavoring. The fried rice has a brilliant wok he taste, and the curry flavor just makes it one of the greatest types of fried rice to eat in Hong Kong. 
14. Sweet and Sour Pork There's no doubt that sweet and sour pork is one of the most famous Chinese foods that has made a name for itself throughout the world at takeout Chinese restaurants. And it's also a fairly common dish in Cantonese cooking that you'll find frequently in Hong Kong. 15. Steamed Fish There are a couple of different ways of preparing steamed fish, one with more of a ginger, green onions, and soy sauce combination, and another with black bean sauce. Both are exceptionally good, and focus especially on the fresh fish. 16. Scrambled Egg Sandwich A scrambled egg sandwich is a pretty famous food in Hong Kong. It was actually quite good, with just the right amount of margarine toasted onto the bread, and oddly addictive beef and eggs in the center. 17. Tofu Pudding Traditionally, Chinese tofu pudding in Hong Kong is served at dim sum restaurants, and so after taking your fill of shrimp dumplings and salty pork ribs, you can satisfy your taste buds and stomach with a soothing, slightly warm, bowl of tofu pudding. 18. Hong Kong French Toast Hong Kong has a long history of foreign influence, and French toast is one of those foods that became popularized at street food stalls and local cafes. Using white bread and a mound of butter, the bread is often layered in peanut butter, before being deep-fried, yes, deep-fried, and then topped with syrup and more butter. It's really more of a dessert than a breakfast dish.
Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give a thumbs up, like, and subscribe to my channel.